the next part is my my problem <laughs> or my topic. Jörn has presented the question how to find out the different information we have to model. So if we know these, how will we model them? What's the approach? As a starting point, please keep in mind, we are not doing it for themselves. It's not, or it should not be an academic approach. Yeah, as the professor says, it should not be. What we need is a, a data transport. So we have two tools we intend to connect, a sending and a receiving tool. So the sending tool can make it easy, takes the data, write it out, but it has one precondition, the definition of data elements to be exported, including syntax and semantic of the account. <coughs> the reading tool, the receiver, has to know the same, but with one addition. It has to have knowledge about the dependencies <coughs> to its internal data model. So it has to interpret the received information. So what we in fact need is a mapping between these data models of the receiving and the sending tool. Yes? And we intend to do that over using automation. So what we need is not just the syntax, but also the semantics of the information. They have to be unique to, from receiver side, find out how to be interpret, how to map it to the own data model. Yeah, and we intend to use automation and all that. So let's come back to the example Bjorn has shown. We have objects with object properties, which are structured in an object hierarchy. We may have different types of relations between them. All that we have to model in a semantically unique way. What can we exploit? We can exploit our structure of automation ML. Rainer has presented. And what we are now using is the structure of CAX. So what we finally exchange is just the instance hierarchy. But all around the libraries we need for proper semantic definition and finally for interpretation of the semantics in the receiving tool. So we have, in some way, developed our libraries. How could we do that? And we have more or less under the line developed a kind of process how to do that. What we need is we have to develop our role <coughs> classes. Yeah, we need role class libraries to have the abstract <coughs> semantics. And we need interface class libraries so that the different objects of different roles can be related to each other, to model the relations between them. If we have both, we can develop our reusable objects. So product catalogs, for example. And if we all of these three sets of libraries, then we can start to model our system. So the three sets of libraries we usually develop once, but the system models we do very often. Let's take an example. Yeah? It's the example of Arndt and his family to model it in the sense of Bjorn's example. So it's my daughter, my wife, my parents. And now let's follow the approach of modeling the different semantics. What do we have? We should start with the role classes. The role classes should define the abstract semantics of the different objects we have to exchange in our project. They are seen, on the one hand, as requirement to the exporter to provide attributes, interfaces to the different objects. 
and on receiver side, so on the importer side, they could be used to map them, the objects, to the internal data model. So to see, okay, there is something with a role married person, so I know I have to find some attributes describing the marriage, describing the relations to the other married person, and so on. How can we do that? At first, we have to identify the necessary concepts. Yeah? What are the objects relevant in the model system? Yeah? Keep in mind what Bjorn has shown. Yeah? You should also keep in mind you have a tool in the background. What are the main concepts of the tool? What are the objects you are usually modeling there? So far, our example of a human society, yeah? we have persons, they could be married, they could be employed in a company, they could be member of an association, in my case the IEEE. We have geographic objects, countries, cities. We have society objects, companies, associations, something like a marriage, and they have attributes. So we, from the process, set up the role, derive it from abstract roles of higher level. So in that case, for example, our society object defines an abstract society with a number of members, and we can derive a company out of it, or a marriage. In the case of the marriage, the number of members at least in Germany, is fixed by two. Yeah. So we have our <coughs> generic roles, specialized roles, and attributes to them. If we have the roles, we can define the interfaces between the roles. That means, what are the relations of the different roles to each other? They are finally abstract concepts within a project or to external data. We should describe them as contact points to the relations, looking on how many relations we may have, how, what are the different types of relations, yeah? are they directed or non-directed, and so on. Again, we have to look on what types of interfaces do we need? What are the concepts within our tools to describing dependencies between objects? If we have them, we can set up the interface classes, derive them from more abstract classes, and add attributes to them. Yeah, for our example, in our human society, we may have membership interfaces, could be employment or society member, it's two different types of relations. As a society member, you will pay money. As an employee, you should get money. We have also binary relations, like marriage or parents and child relations. And we define our classes, derive them from more abstract classes, and may add attributes to them. If we have our interfaces, we can go back to our role classes and add the re relevant interfaces to roles, naming, okay, in our case, in a marriage, we have two partners, husband and wife. If they have that, we can start with our system unit classes. The system unit classes should be seen as concrete type of objects you reuse within the engineering kind of product catalog. Or, for example, in the case of, of electrical planning, the different objects which used in an electrical plan. Drives, sensors, PLCs, uh, clamping lines, and so on. We can specify them, give them properties, and the kind of uh, attributes, give them relations as interfaces, yeah? specify the roles they implement. So if we have 
in the case of our example, we, we have a married person. It should have the role person and married. Yeah. And specify the internal structure. So what should we do in that case? We have to model the different type of relevant objects and look on the hierarchy they have. Okay. We, therefore, we can set up the system unit class, derive them from more abstract system unit classes, add relevant attributes, interfaces, roles, and there we can add information we have about that object, geometry, kinematics, <coughs> behavior, and so on, by exploiting PLC OpenXML and Collada. So for our example, we have as system unit classes, cities, countries, the university, the IEEE, the marriage, and so on. If we have that, yeah. we can add attributes. For example, the global position of a city or the attributes to a marriage yeah, or a married person. Typical information you have on your identity card. Yeah. But related to a marriage, yeah, the preferred type of flower to prevent the wife with the right present on the marriage day. And you see here we have then two roles which are assigned to that system unit class. Yeah. And we may add substructures. Here you can see the structure of Germany, the from the point of my family relevant structure to federal countries, to cities within them. And if we have all our libraries, we can start to model the instance hierarchy. Keep in mind, the instance hierarchy is finally the thing we intend to exchange. So in the exchange process shown at the beginning, we have yeah, just the instance hierarchy which we really need to exchange if all libraries are agreed by the partners in advance. Then they have them, and it's fine. So we can model them without using the created libraries, but we should use them to make it easier to the receiver to interpret. How we can create them? We should look on the different objects we are modeling, what are the objects we have to model, which classes they belong to, what is the hierarchical structure. Then we can set up them in the hierarchy at the relevant attributes, interfaces, substructures, information, and link them to each other. Finally, using internal links. How could that look like for our example? Yeah, we can create our instance hierarchy. It's a little bit small. <coughs> you can get the complete example for me as an AML file. Yeah, we have our example arms family, which has two main locations which are relevant, Europe and North America. North America, just the USA, because the IEEE is hosted there. And in Europe, it's just Germany, with two federal countries, and Magdeburg and Treuglitzen as the city of interest. And within these cities, we have Arndt, Beate and Mona as relevant objects in Magdeburg, and Jota and Hermann as relevant objects in Treuglitzen with their related properties and among them the relevant interfaces. So uh, that you can see, okay, that's me up there and I'm linked as an employee and I'm linked in the marriage to my wife and I'm the son of my parents and so on. So that's one possible model. And now we have a problem because we can model the same information in different ways. It depends on the interpretation of what we are doing. In the first model I've shown, I've modeled the relationship of my person to the IEEE, 
as an IEEE member by using an interface. Defining, okay, if somebody is a member, he has an interface to the association. We can do the same by modeling it using a mirror object so that a mirror of the object armed is a substructure of the IEEE. We have some interpretation, <coughs> some possible. And we should, during the modeling, have it in mind. Because the other partner, the receiver or the sender, should know how will we model which information. That should be also agreed in advance. And that's one thing we should address <coughs> in automation ML. Most of information which are standardized or will be standardized in the future are modeled by white papers. That are our basement to, to show how it works. And these different types of interpretation of using the model should be modeled or represented in our BPRs, in our best practice recommendations.